Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's 3.2, talking about perfect squares and perfect cubes, okay? Now, hopefully you understand that if you have a number like this, x squared, we call this number down here, we call that the base, okay? And we call this number up here, we call that the exponent. Uh, we also can call it a power, okay? So that's something that hopefully you have seen in the past, okay? And the way this works, right, is that it, it means that um, x squared means x times x. Uh, big thing, not 2 times x, okay? This is huge. It does not equal 2 times x, and that is something that a lot of you are going to do. Now, one of the cool things about a square here is if uh, it's a very geometrical kind of uh, explanation, right? Because if you have something that looks like this, 4 squared, um, some of you will hopefully know right away that that's equal to 16, okay? It's not equal to 4 times 2, which is 8. But where do we come up with the word square? Because if you have something that is 4 long, and then you make it 4 wide, and then make it into a square, then you end up having how many cubes or how many different squares? Right? Most of you can see that it'd be 4 times 4. So 4 squared gives you 16 little squares in there. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to be estimating square roots, uh, big numbers. Um, sometimes we're going to have uh, cubes or, or squares that have a side length of 100 or 50. So we end up with very large numbers. Now, what you're going to be using is your calculator as well. Okay. Everybody know how to figure out how to use your calculator. Here's the x squared button. So 4 squared would equal 16. Okay. Uh, and similarly, if you wanted to take the square root of 16 to get back to 4, right? So the square root of 16 would equal 4. Square root basically means what do you multiply by itself to get that number inside, okay? Now, there's a couple of things that I want to show you here. If I have the 16 here, you put the 2 on the outside. Uh, this is called the radical, okay? It's a radical sign, the whole thing. The inside is called the radicand, okay? And this thing on the outside is called the index, okay? And the index of 2, we don't need to write it. Okay, so the square root of 16, for example, is equal to this as well. We don't need to write the 2 for a square root. Okay, when we get to cube roots and stuff, we will definitely need to do that. Now, what is a, what is a perfect square? So, perfect squares, what I suggest you do is you make a list of perfect squares so that you know what they are. Okay, and a perfect square is like 16. You can take the square root of 16, right? So let's look at this. 1 squared is equal to 1, so the square root of 1 is equal to 1, right? 2 squared is equal to 4, so the square root of 4 is equal to 2. 3 squared is equal to 9, so the square root of 9 is equal to 3. 4 squared equals 16, so the square root of 16 is 4. 5 squared is 25, the square root of 25 is 5. 6 squared is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. And we're going to keep going. I'm going to give them all to you up to 10. Okay? Because this is something that you should probably be pretty comfortable with. Let me just finish this off. And then we know that 10 squared is equal to 100. So the square root of 100 would be 10. The, this is a list of your perfect squares. Okay, and definitely something that you want to be able to do. Now, what I'm going to ask you quickly is could you find the square root of 1296? Now, absolutely I could. Look at this. The square root of 1296. Boom, it's 36. Okay, I'm not asking you if you can do it that way, uh, even though that's probably the way we're going to do it. I am going to show you uh, a quick way to do it here. You break it down. Break down into prime factors, okay? So let's quickly do that. 1296, 1296, that's going to be, uh, oh my God, 2 times 649, right? And I don't even know if you could break that down on your own without any help, 
right? But let's go 649 divided by 3. No, 649 divided by... Um, am I even right? 649? Hold on. 1296 divided by 2. Oops, hold on. 1296 divided by 2. 648. My apologies. So that makes it a little bit easier because now I can break it down into 2 and 324. I can go 2 and 162. I can go 2 and 81. And now I can go 9 and 9. 3 and 3. Uh, 3 and 3. So if we look at all these numbers, right, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 2s, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 3s. So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So what I'm just basically trying to show you is how this prime factorization can actually help us figure out if it's a square root or not. And a square root means you have to have two of the same numbers. Can you make two groups out of these eight prime factors that are the same, and I'm hoping that you can see you can take two twos and two threes in each case. So this would be two times two is four, times three is 12, times three is 36, so we have 36 times 36, so that means that the square root of 1296 is 36, okay? That's essentially where we're going with that. Um, if I was going to ask you, for example, uh, square, um, let's say, with an area of 49 centimeters squared, okay, find the side length. What would be the length of the side? Now, you know that it's going to be the same on both sides. So, x times x, which is x squared, is equal to 49. And when you want to find the answer here, you take the square root. So x is equal to the square root of 49, which is 7. Okay? These are the types of questions you're going to have to get. Uh, what we're going to look at right now, though, uh, are cubes as well. Okay? So let's look at uh, a list of perfect cubes. Okay? So let's do the same thing we did before. One cube, that's just one. So now we do the cube root of... 1, that's equal to 1. Notice that when we do cube root, you actually have to write down the 3, okay? So 2 cubed is equal to 8. That means that the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. 3 cubed is 27. That means that the cube root of 27 is 3. 4 cubed is 64. That means that the cube root of 64 is 4. 5 cubed is 125. That means that the cube root of 125 is equal to 5. 6 cubed is equal to, I think it's 296. I can't remember now. 6 cubed, uh, 216, sorry, is 216. That means the cube root of 216 is equal to 6. 7 cubed, these I don't know, so I actually have to do them too. I should know them, shouldn't I? 343, so it's 343, and the cube root of 343 is back at 7. And we have 8 cubed. Well, 8 to the power, uh, oops, 8 to the power of 3, and we have 512, so 512, and the cube root of 512 is back at 8, and if we have 9 cubed, we're getting higher and higher, right, 9 to the power of 3, that's 729, so 729, and that's the cube root of 729 would be 9, and 10 cubed, I'm hoping you guys can sort out without a calculator, it's going to be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000, and that means that the cube root of 1,000 is 10. Now, uh, what you're going to have to figure out it ha is how to do cube roots on your calculator, okay? For me, for example, I have a button here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where the heck is it? Oh, you know what? I don't have a button. I got this. I got math. And see, I got cube root in here and cube root. So I've got a special way of doing it. Okay? You guys are going to have a button that looks like this. X, something like that. Or it's going to be the other way around. Y with an X in here. And what you do is you put the 3 in first, then put the number, and uh, then hit that button. I, we'll have to figure it out. Okay? So bring your calculator to me if you don't know how to use it. And come and talk to me. We'll sort it out. Okay? Now... What we could also do is find the cube root of, let's say, 20, uh, let's go 17, 28, okay? Let's break this down into its prime factors again. So, 
2 times, let's go 17, 28 divided by 2, that's going to give me 864. Should be able to do that in our heads, but whatever. This is going to be 432. So notice that I keep doing the same thing, 2 and 216, and then 2 and 108, and then 2 and 54, and then 9 times 6, 3 times 3 times 2 times 3. Okay, so we broke it all the way down. Now, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2s, and 3, 3s. So, uh, the cube root of 1728 has 6, 2s, and 3, 3s. Okay, so the idea here is that we're looking at making 3 groups again. Uh, like with the square root, we made two groups, two equal groups. With the cube root, we're making three equal groups. So hopefully you can see that that's two twos and a three. Two twos and a three. Two twos and a three. Two times two is four, and times three is 12. So the cube root of 1728 is, let me check this out just to make sure. So the cube root of 1728 is... 12. Bingo. We got it. Okay. Now the type of question you might have here is volume of a cube is 1728 centimeters cubed. So the side, well, you know what we didn't talk about? How the hell does this work with the cube? Well, look, if I have a square that is 12 by 12, do you see how the area would be 12 times 12, which is 144, right? Well, if I have another dimension here, which is 12, that means that I multiply it by another 12, okay? So if you're given the volume and you know it's a cube, you just cube root 1728 to get 12. Find side length. So... This is what we're doing here, guys, over and over and over. we got to remember uh, a couple things here. Remember what we talked about with this. This is very important to grasp, okay, what the numbers are here, the radical, the radicand, and the index. When we have an exponent or a, a square root, we don't always have to write it, okay? These are exactly the same thing. We don't need the two. As soon as we get up into cube roots and we're going to be looking at fourth roots and fifth roots, then yes, we are going to need to um, write them in.